Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Sounds from the Cellar, hosted by the Olive Tree Mad Men. Today, we're going to start with a new series called Podlings, shorter episodes where you get to know the band a little bit better. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Casarino. All of the Olive Tree Mad Men, welcome. Assembled. 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 To Assembled. the Sounds in the Cellar, first of our special series called Podlings. Sounds in the Cellar with the Olive Tree Mad Men. Are we agreed on that name? Well, we're starting like we do, but we may we may eventually disagree on Podlet? Podling. I like podlet. 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 Do you like podlet? I do like podlet. Like a lit pod? Like this This pod oh, is mad could be lit? That. Could be. Could double as that. It's okay. Podlet because we're podlet. talking with Nick Casarino. Yeah. The great, Hello. The great Nicholas Casarino. Nick odd. Boogie. Born Nick Casarino, Nicky Cake. No. What were you born? Nicholas Nicholas what? Joseph Casarino. Okay. Mm. Thank you. That's uh. Full Italian. Full Italian. <laughs> Very Sicilian. Catholic. Sicilian. Sicilian. Oh, there's a difference. Don't well, with, don't mess with that. You know what? <laughs> yeah, the Sicilians would uh, stick West side or east side. That, you know? <laughs> Not from Milan. Uh, no. It's a different, different kettle of fish. Well, today we're going to focus on, we're going to make Nick the focus of this podling, podlet, uh, through one of the songs that we play a lot on Monday nights. We call it the bluegrass one, but it has its uh, it has its own name. What's the name what of the song? <laughs> the name is called I'll Push On. Mm. I'll Push On. Yeah, but uh, I'm down to change it. No, no I like it. Name. The name of the song name. is the name of the song. I'll Push On. I'll push On. Um, and that is, is that said in the song? I'll Push that On. That is yeah. said once in the song. Yeah. Once, okay. Yeah. yeah. One and done. So how did it become the bluegrass song? Because it was just... Just the only bluegrass one that I ever wrote, really. Right. That's the only one bluegrass one that we do. Well, yeah. there was a minute when me, before the Mad Men became like this, when me, you, and Noam were doing Monday nights initially, and we did... I got a big... Da, 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 da. No, we did this one. Wish I was a part of Rocky Top down in the Tennessee. Right, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, well, when did when did you write this song? I wrote this song a hundred years ago. Let me think. <laughs> um, it was like 15 years ago. I had just moved to New York. I was working in Guitar Center. Oh, shit. I didn't oh. know you worked at Guitar Center. Well, yeah. I don't know if I knew I worked. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't sure. <laughs> they, they weren't. <laughs> I was just in the back in the acoustic room all day playing acoustics and banjo. And I wrote this song on banjo because the tuning of the banjo is like these top strings, but with this one down. So I was playing it. I was just going like this on a banjo, like. Just doing that. And um, then that's how the song came. Okay. Yeah. And so he wrote it in a guitar center. Wrote it in a guitar center on a banjo at work. Got paid to write it. Yeah. Awesome. Come on, God. So Someone hard. else is dying. Yeah, yeah. Nobody goes to Guitar Center anymore. Yeah, exactly. You got time to write. Exactly. <laughs> no, that was a crazy job. Unless they're sponsoring this podcast, in which case everyone does and should go to Guitar Center. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping your eyes open. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like uh, But so at that point, uh, how old were you then? Oh, man, I was 21. 21. Yeah. And you'd been playing guitar since? 12. 12. And you were like noticeably like oh shit you, you were noticeably like a problem like what 15 i'd say 14 i really started getting in the shed right 15 though i started really sinking in yeah 16 i was gigging and then uh here we are yeah, yeah. jazz snob back then mm. jazz you, snob at 15 you must have been insufferable just the <laughs> i was too i was too i didn't listen to anything but that. i was like pfft. Coltrane's the greatest yeah, ever. Too, Everything yeah. else is whack. Yeah. And all this Literally. was taking place. All this <laughs> was, was like, taking place where? In uh, Berlin, South Burlington, Vermont. <laughs> well, I, had, I was fortunate Berlin. to have a couple good teachers. High school music teacher Dave Grippo. He showed me a bunch of music. Taught me about jazz. Got me and a private guitar teacher Paul Asbell up there, who I studied with intensely for my entire high school time. And then another teacher after I graduated high school named James Harvey, who's an incredible writer. Trombone player, mm. piano player, drummer. And he hired me in his band where he played drums. And that was like, a, he says, I supervise his dissertation. That's what I said. <laughs> but yeah, I used to study with him on this gig, basically, after mm -hmm. I graduated high school. Right. So most of your chops and vocabulary then growing up, what, I mean, you started like off like in punk when you were a kid, right? Punk rock. 
Okay. Yep. And then like we got the Dave Matthews bug okay. the guitar because I loved the right. sounding chords. Yeah. And then um, my ear just naturally was like, there's more, there's more, there's more. And then I went to high school and then I was like, I think I want to learn jazz. And mm -hmm. right. my teacher Dave Grippa was like, here, check this out. Everybody knows the famous punk to jazz pipeline. Just, of course. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just pumping out More dangerous shredders. than school to prison pipeline. Yeah. <laughs> the only one that's been um, So between like 16 and 21, you went from jazz knob to writing a bluegrass. Like how, how has that transformation happened? So what was happening was I was in the process of, I, was, I could practice for hours and hours a day, four or five, six hours. And I was doing that. And then... Um, in Burlington, Vermont, we uh, I went to a I went to a Catholic like kindergarten through eighth grade school, and my parents played music at the folk group in that school, and so um, or it, at the church masses on Sunday. So they would play music in the folk group. There was this thing called Gospel Fest in Burlington, Vermont, where um, people would bring in different gospel artists to lead choirs um, in Burlington, Vermont, and basically these people come there and they teach us a bunch of gospel songs and um i learned contemporary gospel music and in that um like in that um i learned stuff like uh for example if we're in this key chords like this which is my shit yeah and um and then I was like, well, these are jazz chords, you know, right? The gospel stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, but they're singing like the music I want to sing like. They're mm -hmm. singing soul music. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, so this is like a soul music with jazz stuff with the worship energy. And so then my parents would start bringing the gospel songs into the Catholic church and we would play those songs there. And I was playing bass in the folk group at the time. But um, then uh, I started writing my own gospel kind of jazz tunes. And I had a band called Nick Casarino's or Nick Casarino and the Sisters of Salvation. Okay, and Lord. Okay, <laughs> in your own tent, I had my shit, and I had gospel songs that I wrote, and um, and then I, I slowly started to realize that, you know, the greatest parts of all. How come I never heard about the sisters? I forgot to tell you about the sisters of salvation. We have so much kids. I don't know. You see what I told you guys? Yeah. You find out. Damn near a stranger. Yeah. No, <laughs> I mean, no, I mean the one we had some gigs at some clubs, but the one biggest gig we had was the headlining at the Burlington Discovery Jazz Festival. And my brother was playing drums. He was 14. Mm. I had my mom singing in the Sisters of Salvation, my friend Jennifer Hartswick, and this woman in Cape Paradise I had a bass player. And we were playing in the park and we had like this headlining set and there was this like ominous, super cl cloud coming in all day. And like right when we were about to play, right? Like I was literally counting off the song. I was like, are right, you guys ready? One, two. And then this guy comes over the speakers like, that's it. We're shutting it down. It was like ksh, lightning. And this storm came in fucking sideways, blew the drums off the stage. I had left my guitar out there because we didn't know how bad it was going to be. And we were under a 10. I had to run and get the guitars pouring water out of my guitar. I had to open for Pharaoh Sanders that night oh, at oh the Flynn God. Theater. And what? it was it was chaos. So we never really, really got to fully, fully rip. But um mm. yeah, it was through those processes of writing those songs and studying the gospel music with the jazz knowledge, learning that the best part about all music is all the same thing. And it's you know, it's what it gives to the listener. It's the feeling then it's that higher vibration feeling that you get when you hear something. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and that transcends genre, you know? Yeah, it does. Now you, you look, get the bluegrass though. Oh yeah, I get the bluegrass. So um, I always, I came up with folk also, my parents like Joni Mitchell, James Taylor. I grew up with that kind of stuff. And um, the thing about the bluegrass that I loved, so like, for example, I loved Michael Jackson too. And like um, this one. <laughs> So like a lot of bluegrass songs have those chords in it. Right. So like my my song, um, the bluegrass song, if I played it, it's like the same shit. Oh, that's great. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Like it's shit like that. And I love the thing I loved about bluegrass was that it ties in. It's more than blues in terms of the fact that it ties in some of this stuff and some of this stuff and some of this stuff rather than just but, but, but is that a, is that really 
is that just you, like you being able to take bluegrass and bring it closer to what Nick does? Because I don't so, really, I'm not sure that I hear that in bluegrass. Yes, in terms large. of your voicings, because Major 70 sounded more okay. soul voicing. But for example, pig in a pen. I got a pig home in a pen, corn to feed him more. Oh, yeah. That type of shit. Yeah, yeah. That leads me to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'll take it a little step further, but. Yeah. All I need is a pretty little girl. Yeah. Feed them when I'm going. Yeah. It's like in there, kind of. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of in there. But yeah, so I came that. The one bluegrass thing that I really, I had like a, a CD, like some compilation. I can't really remember. And it had a bunch of old things on there, like the song I was showing you earlier, Mike. Um, uh, and, Angel rock me to sleep, angel rock me to sleep in the cradle of love. And the bluegrass actually gospel thing is like ties together too. But this one recording, Ricky Skaggs and the Boston Pops, this is live record and they do this version of Pig in a Pen, which is the song I just played. But it's like, I got a pig on the pen, corn to feed him on all the new bluegrass. They're ripping, burning tempo with the orchestra and that record turned me out. That's when I was like, damn, I want to write something like this. And my Bluegrass song, it's nothing like, um, like the chords are like, it's, it's traditional chords, you know what I mean? I didn't really come up with that progression. I mean, we came up with the arrangement. This part makes it different. Yeah. That makes it kind of our shit, but like the other chords are like, it's fucking I want you back, you know what I mean? Right. Shit like that. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. And then like lyrically and stuff, like how did, where did you... Lyrically, I was just like telling a story, feeling I just moved to the city. I was thinking about Vermont. I was thinking about my dog that just died. I've always found that really interesting listening to the song that you... It's really a song about moving to the city, which I guess is kind of like a country experience. You yeah. know, like, you know, people eventually, you know, so many people just migrate migrate to the cities. But I, when you're talking about... Uh, Grits and collard greens yeah, in New city. York City. It's, it's, them, it always stuck out to me as this kind of like uh, cla a cool kind of a juxtaposition. And yeah, I mean, black girlfriends. Right. <laughs> That's right. <funny. laughs> well, I for what you, you know what yeah, yeah, yeah. She wanted the greens. I yeah. said I'd make them. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> but I did what I had to do <laughs> to keep a girlfriend. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah. So your influences to music started off with jazz and then that ever was it it was the punk rock con. so the gospel came gospel came after studying jazz with your family the family yep and your whole family plays and sings yep mom sings plays guitar dad sings plays guitar keys sax song writes and my brother plays keys and drums and sings also yeah Casarino family band mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah. Yeah. they got that the family setting is it like music all the time, everywhere you go, it's always in the house. And yeah, it was like part of our lives. Um, it's funny looking back. We got some family videos. Like my great grandmother would have a. Um, she used to run this ecumenical concert at this church where people a Christmas concert, a ecumenical concert, which oh. I think means all denominations are welcome, mm -hmm. and you could come and we would do a Christmas concert. And she. Um, and we would always do that as a family. And we found some family videos recently where, like, we're on the way to the Christmas concert. And, like, we stop at my grandparents' house to, like, rehearse what we're going to do. Literally, like, in an hour before the show. I'm, like, five. They're, like, all right, ready? All right. Uh, and well, they just, yeah, looking back, I was, like, damn, just been procrastinating out here. <laughs> then waiting to, <laughs> I was, like, that's where I get some of it. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah, it was a part of our lives. Did you always know you were going to be a musician or was there? I did. You, since you were a kid? No question. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of, uh, what were you like in school? Did you, were you just like waiting to get to the end of the day to, so you could play? Terrible. Um, I mean, I just wasn't giving a fuck because I was like, how does this apply to anything that I'm going to have to do or anyone's going to have to fucking do right. in the real world? Mm. Can you teach me how to do anything with money? Can you teach me self-love? Pay less taxes. You weren't <laughs> thinking about it through that frame. <laughs> I was. I was when I was in really? high school. I was like, this is bullshit. This is oh, wow. I was like, I need to learn about how to get paid to do what I want. I need to learn about taking care of people. I want to learn about um, excellence, not, you know, soldier shit. Huh. And like... Aggressive kid. Well, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, <laughs> fucking, yeah. And uh, plus, I was doing a bunch of gigs at the time and practicing all the time, and I wasn't doing my homework. Mm -hmm. So I barely fucking graduated. I graduated D. 
D minus probably. They, somebody, one of them changed my grade, I found out later on an exam to a 75, so I would pass the class so that I could get out of there. Mm. Shout out to Mrs. Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, get this fucking guy out of here. Like, hey. So wait, all this tutelage I'm hearing about when you were applying your crap, it was in mostly in guitar. Mm -hmm. When did you know you could sing? I was singing first, but then when I was doing the jazz stuff, I kind of stopped because I didn't want to sing standards. And um, and then, yeah, so like I was writing Dave Matthews style of stuff when I was like 13, 14, and then I started jazz, jazz snob only, mm -hmm. no singing. Yeah. And then I heard the gospel stuff and wanted to start singing more, so I wrote some of that stuff. But I feel like I didn't really like my voice until I moved here. And then I met, mm. I met you mm. at the underground. The underground, the village underground turned me out in terms of how to step up the shit. Cause I got to hear people like Mike and I got to hear people like Colin. I got to hear Amanda and Sasha and Cheryl and Jiffy and mm. just savages yeah. do their shit. And um, I wanted to sing more like that, but I'm not like a gospel singer and I'm not a Broadway singer and I'm not a super powerful belter. So I had to find what it is that I can do. And I'm a storyteller. Mm. I'll flip, a, flip in a couple good falsetto fucking every once yeah, in a while. Yeah, pretty artfully. Yeah, it's like, it's like, you know, I know my lane. Yeah, yeah well, damn. Well, you're a killer. What are you gonna do? You're a killer. Well, That's you know, great. we're gonna play, uh, we're gonna play your song. Let's it's go. a bluegrass song. It's called I'll Push On. Let's, Let's go. Do it. All right, Nick. Let's just do it. Just do it. I am from a land of green mountains, rivers, trees, and streams where the birds sing harmony, my love The land my mama and father tend The land my brother owns and defends The land my dog could call her own I live no more My love, she calls for me my strife she does not see, no The pain is pain for me Where we'll go I'll never know, we're all right now Mama loves her little boy Though lonely, broken, tired I'll push on, yeah This wooden box we still string Small down voice from which I say Well, this belly full of beer would soon to be whiskey Is as real as it's ever gonna get I thought I needed to know where the river came out I didn't see that it fueled my doubt The holy goodness in your name I pray Let me last till another Sunday All right now York City. I'll cook your grits, I'll cook your collard greens, my love. Do you recall the fire? Do you remember desire? I lay it down. Love on love on love 
came out come on I didn't see that if you my dog no I didn't show no I did no I didn't show no I did no I didn't show no I did well holy God in your name I pray to she yes I do I do 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 well, look at here. Let me last. To another Sunday, one more time. <laughs> 